No, I'm gonna swear on everything, that I literally have had one sip of wine to toast my Friday afternoon, but I thought I would start with the ones I read. No, 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 no. I don't know why I'm talking like a weirdo, but I am. Hey everybody, it's Audrey, and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. Today is, I was gonna say it's Friday, because it's Friday, so that's when I'm filming this. I don't know when it's gonna go up, but happy Friday, everybody. I'm done with work, I'm done with the week, I'm ready, even though I can't <laughs> go anywhere this weekend or do anything, I'm just happy it's the freaking weekend. Um, that does not stop being fun. But I wanted to film a video today, duh, and this is gonna be a book haul of the library variety. So I don't know if this is like, by library or just by Hoopla, but my Hoopla app through my library, usually you can borrow five books a month, but given the current situation with everybody being stuck at home, they have upped it to 10 books a month that you can borrow at any given time, or maybe in total, but either way. So at the end of March, I added a couple more books to my list and then I'm gonna like re-up in April, but I am totally loving being able to listen to some new books, being able to read some new books. They actually have some new releases, which surprised me. And I thought I would just talk about all the books that are in my current queue and then some books that are kind of on the docket um, that I'm hoping to borrow, read, get to in the month ahead. One of the changes I have made now that I'm home, normally in the morning when I was getting ready for work, I used to watch the news or watch something on TV to kind of see what was happening. I have made a concerted effort to stop watching the news, to stop watching CNN. It was not doing anything good for me. And what I've started to do is while I am doing all the morning things and making breakfast, I've been listening to audiobooks. And it's just been a great distraction. It's been a great way to get a book in. It's been a great way to start the day. So I'm really enjoying it. It's working for me, so that's how I'm getting a couple more books in, which is great. I was in a hardcore rut, as you guys know. I feel like I'm out of it. Knocking on the floor again, because I don't want to jinx myself. So one of the other things that I love about library borrowing is that it can like run the gamut. So I have some nonfiction, I have some audio, like I said, I have some physical books, I have some YA, I have some adult, I have some women's fiction, I have some thriller, <laughs> it's like, all over the map, just kind of like how I am right now. So we're just gonna dive in just in the order that they are listed. I've finished two, I am almost done with the third one, and then it gets super random. So first up is The Year We Turned 40 by Liz Fenton and Lisa Steinke. And this is women's fiction. I did the audiobook of this. I totally enjoyed it. They are a duo who I actually have read before. They originally did women's fiction. Now they're kind of delving into thrillers. I had read a women's fiction of theirs. I have not read their thrillers yet, but I have seen them at Thriller Fest and I'm excited to dive into their thrillers because I'm curious to see kind of where they go. And this was a totally enjoyable book. This is about three best friends who it opens on the year they turn 40 and one of the women gives birth that night and basically her having a baby triggers the other two to do something in their personal lives and then we fast forward i'm going to keep it vague for i don't want to give any of it away then we fast forward 10 years and it is their 50th birthday they all have a birthday right around the same time so they always celebrate together and the three of them are kind of lamenting the past 10 years of their lives and they've all agreed that the year they turned 40, they all made a decision that they've come to regret that has changed the trajectory of all of their lives. And as fate would have it, they're in Vegas. There's a, there's a, I was gonna say, there's a magician and he grants them this wish where they can go back and relive the year they turned 40 to try and fix, change things. And poof. That's what they do. So if you guys follow me, you know I love these like second chance, clean slate, alternate timeline, alternate reality, kind of fixing going back in time, knowing what you know now then type of a thing. I thoroughly enjoyed this book. It made me laugh. It 100% made me cry at certain points. I really enjoyed the female friendship, the female dynamic. It is the kind of book I used to read 
religiously and it's the kind of book I haven't read a lot of lately but I really enjoyed sort of like being back in that world if that makes sense and it just appealed to me completely totally listened to it like powered power listen to it trigger warnings there is infidelity in this book which I know is an issue for a lot of people um, I'm not like a fan of it like don't get me wrong but it doesn't bother me in books normally it's not something that I I would not read a book because of I would say um, and then death of a parent is another big theme in this which is heart-wrenching but there's some beautiful moments but kind of two trigger warnings for you but if you guys are looking for like a, a solid women's fiction book and a little back in time reliving things uh, I highly recommend it so it's kind of fun the second book that I finished is The Last Affair by Margot Hunt and I talked about Margot Hunt last year I listened to For Better or Worse which is I would say kind of like psychological thriller like not these aren't neither of these are like this is more mystery I would say so it's not like fast-paced actiony thriller and then her first book Best Friends Forever I didn't like at all but for better or worse I still highly recommend that book I think it's great and twisty and wonderful this was a solid read and this is not that I was like looking for a theme here so it's called The Last Affair so it should go without um uh without saying trigger warning for infidelity because we open on an affair and again not a proponent of it but it's the entire core of the book but I would say if ever there was a reason not to be unfaithful this is sort of like a cautionary tale in a lot of ways but this book is about two married couples in Florida they both have children and a husband and wife they're they're like in, in the neighborhood together so they're not friends per se but they're in the same community so they know each other and the husband and wife wind up having an affair and this is sort of six months leading up to the murder of someone in the connection so my only issue with this is that it opens with a prologue which I know can be super controversial some people like it some people don't sometimes it sets a good tone sometimes it just gives too much away and in this case they tell us out of the gate who gets murdered and I wish they hadn't I wish they either start a chapter one with chapter one or left it cryptic so that we sort of did one of these like cops show up there's a body but we don't know who died because in all honesty like any one of these people could have been murdered in the story and I think it would have had more tension to it so we already know like who <laughs> who got it done to them but we don't know who done it so it's a lead up to that so there was a good mystery of trying to figure out like who could have done it and why because everyone sort of had a motivation too but it was an enjoyable listen like I said definitely more mystery than anything else because you are trying to figure out like who the killer is and what led them to it and you get to see sort of the evolution of the affair and the ripple effect that has on everyone in their network but enjoyable I like her writing I like her her voice I liked the story it was not like it wasn't twisty and turny and like edge of my seat all the time but it was an enjoyable read listen the next book I'm listening to right now and I am maybe 90% into it is pep talks for writers by Grant Faulkner who is from National Novel Writing Month I wound up I talked about this in another video I wound up hunkering down and editing the crap out of the first 35 pages of the story that I'm writing sending it in for a critique down to the wire it took way more time than I remembered it was going to take and with everything else kind of going on in the background it's just was sort of like a cuckoo kind of couple of weeks but I did it I sent it in Tuesday I t I'm taking a little break for a couple of days and this book is just sort of like the perfect palate cleanser a little bit of like you got this girl tips tricks takeaways nothing revolutionary but I really enjoy Grant Faulkner um, again National Novel Writing Month I've talked about that a lot he has a podcast which I really enjoy my only bummer about this is he doesn't actually narrate it himself but the guy who narrates it is fine but given that Grant has a podcast and I know what his voice sounds like I would much rather kind of hear it coming from him but it's good it's enjoyable it's easy it's the kind of book you can dip in and out of if you are a writer it is writer specific not creator specific I just you know 
it's an easy one. It's fun to listen to. There are some good nuggets and takeaways. And again, just sort of a little bit of a palate cleanser from having written like a crazy person for a couple weeks. Uh, it's just sort of exactly what I need and it's hitting the spot. Okay, now we can get into the rest of the books I have on the docket that I haven't started yet. Next one, another nonfiction in the National Novel Writing Month, Canon. This is Chris Beatty's book, No, Pro no Plot, No Problem. So Chris Beatty is the original founder of National Novel Writing Month. For those of you who don't know, it is 30 days in November to write 50,000 words. Literary abandon, there's so many taglines for this. And a lot of people going cold, blind, don't plan ahead. And this book is targeted towards people like me, where if you don't have a plot, he's telling you no problem, you've got this. So haven't started it yet, but I'm excited to get into it. I've seen Chris speak before, and again, I'm trying to balance out the writing side of things. I'm trying to leverage this opportunity, dare I say we have, about being home and sort of being forced to not be able to do anything else and really do a lot of writing during this time. So hoping this book is going to be a little bit more inspiration to keep me on track. In the new release category, I am super excited to find this. It is Diana Urban's All Your Twisted Secrets. And this was on my most anticipated releases. I am still, with one exception, not in a ban of buying books, but I haven't bought a book. And it's like so much temptation, especially now to like do some emotional shopping, but I haven't done it. This is one of the books I wanted to get. So I'm thrilled that I found it here. It is it says like for fans of One of Us is Lying and beloved classics of Agatha Christie. So this is very much, I think it's sort of like an and then there were none type of things where people get lured somewhere. I don't know if it matters, but something happened over the past year and it's the queen bee, the athlete, the valedictorian, the stoner, the loner, and the music geek. So it's a little like breakfast clubby, hence one of us is lying type of a thing. And I think they all get brought together and it says someone has locked them into a room with a bomb, a syringe filled with poison, and a note saying they have an hour to pick someone to kill or else everybody dies. So it's a race against the clock. It pins them all against each other. Why they are there, what they have done, I don't know. But I've heard some good things about this book and I am super excited to get into it. The next book on my list was also another one of my most anticipated books and it is Writers and Lovers by Lily King. And this is totally random in that I didn't, I don't know anything about Lily King or this book, but I came across it when I was researching some 2020 new releases. And basically this takes place in the nineties, which I love. And it takes place in and outside Boston, which I love because I went to school there and I lived there. So if you guys follow me, you know that that's all fact about me and also things that I love. But it is, it says it's a portrait of an artist of, um, as a young woman. So she winds up having to return home. She's 31 years old. Um, her mom has passed away. She's kind of like begrudgingly, I think reluctantly winds up having to go home and I think confronts a whole bunch of stuff from her past, it sounds like. So I think it's, it sounds like, <sighs> Okay, sorry, I had to read for a minute. I'm a jerk, I should have figured this out sooner. So it is, she's sort of struggling between her creative ambitions and having to balance the demands of life now. And it says, it's a novel that explores the terrifying and exhilarating leap between the end of one phase of life and the beginning of another. So again, it's gotten some good reviews. It's just interesting to me, it appeals to me, feels right, got it, gonna read it, there we go staying on the new release track. I'm telling you, you guys are so many good new releases out there. Separation Anxiety by Laura Zygman. Also on my list, Laura Zygman wrote Animal, Hu Animal Husbandry, which I've talked about on here, which became that movie, Someone Like You with Ashley Judd. Such a good book, came out in the 90s. I just am a huge fan of her writing. She hasn't written anything in a long time. She wrote a couple books right um, around that time, like Dating Big Bird and Her. And I feel like she's kind of been quiet on the book scene for a while. So it's had some good reviews. It's, this is a woman who's in like middle age limbo. So she's married, kind of distant from her husband. Her kid doesn't seem to want to have too much to do with her. And she's sort of at this phase of her life where she's just feeling a little bit lost and not sure what to do. So it says wickedly funny and surprisingly tender. It's a frank portrait examining the ebb and flow of life's most important relationships tapping into the insecurities and anxieties that most of us keep under wraps and with a voice that is once gleefully irreverent and genuinely touching. 
Laura Zygman has crafted a new classic for anyone taking fumbling steps towards happiness. So again, I really enjoy her writing and her voice. I think she's a smart writer. I just, again, I'm like just sort of craving these kinds of books right now. So we'll see if it strikes a chord. I have an audiobook of this one and I'll let you guys know what happens. Sorry, my memory card was full. So hopefully my angle is not too different. But the next book on my list is a 2019 release and it's called The Last Time I Saw You by Liv Constantine. And they are the sister duo who wrote The Last Mrs. Parrish, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And I haven't picked up this book yet, obviously, but I'm excited to read more by them. So this is Baltimore High Society. And we have a woman named Kate whose mom is murdered in her fancy pants mansion down there. So Kate winds up having to go home. She reconnects with an old friend of hers, Blair, heartbreak, distraught, all this kind of stuff. But then bad goes to creepy because she winds up getting some kind of note that's kind of like, you think you're sad now, you're gonna wish you were the one who died. So <laughs> that sounds horrible in all the best ways. So she reaches out again to Blair. She's all freaked out, obviously. And Blair, it says, starts to take the investigation into her own hands. And she's looking into what could have happened. The murderer could be anyone, friend, neighbor, loved one. But whoever it is, it's clear that Kate is next on their list. So Last Mrs. Parrish was dark and twisty. Some messed up people doing messed up things. So I am expecting more of that from this book. These are another writing duo that I got to see at Thriller Fest lovely ladies excited to read this one and very happy that i found it on the hoopla the next book i have we'll see if i wind up being in the mood to listen to but in the true crime world it is sharon tate and the manson murders by greg king so i just watched finally once upon a time in hollywood by quentin tarantino and if you have seen this movie then duh that's why this book appealed to me and if you haven't the book or the movie is set in Hollywood in 1968 1969 and it's basically like three days in the life of these two fictional characters played by Leo and Brad Pitt and they are neighbors of Sharon Tate and um, Roman Polanski and it kind of weaves things that actually happened in Hollywood and people, real Hollywood people with these two fake characters and how their lives interweave with each other. So the movie is not specifically about Sharon Tate and the Manson murders, but that plays a part in the movie, if that makes sense, without giving anything away. But I had known like a smidge about Sharon Tate and Charlie Manson and I wasn't like a huge as much as I like have sort of delved a little bit into true crime of the past lately I've been more about true crime that happened when I was alive but my antenna's up a little bit I'm a little bit intrigued this could be sort of too dark and twisted but it might be interesting so I'm not quite sure so basically I think it's just sort of obviously it talks about what happened when Sharon Tate and her friends were murdered that night. But it sounds like interviews with people. I don't know if it's like police reports. There's obviously nothing new because they know who did it and people were arrested for it. So it's not an unsolved murder like Golden State Killer was, but it is definitely one of the most well-known murders, I would say, at the time and maybe period ever. Charles Manson obviously um, is notorious and all the worst ways but I was a little bit intrigued I saw it on there so I picked it up we'll see what happens but I would recommend Once Upon a Time in Hollywood I would say it is not what I thought it was going to be I am a big fan of Quentin Tarantino I feel like the more distance I have from the movie and the more I sit on it the more I appreciate it I went down a pretty deep rabbit hole afterwards of watching interviews and some sort of behind the scenes things on it. I stayed very in the dark about the movie before I watched it on purpose. Again, I haven't watched a Tarantino movie in a little bit. Pulp Fiction is definitely one of my favorites, but I very much enjoyed this. I totally get why Brad Pitt won the Oscar for it. I think Leo is great in this movie. So it's just sort of a high quality, well done movie as an aside, but yes, picked up the Sharon Tate true crime story because of it. 
And then the last book I picked up is the audiobook of Dead to Her by Sarah Pinborough. And Sarah Pinborough wrote Behind Her Eyes, which I just read, I think I want to say like in January. And this is one of the books that was on my anticipated list. So if you guys haven't seen the video, I made a deal with myself that I wasn't allowed to read any new releases by authors if I had an old book of theirs on my shelf. So it was sort of a game I'm playing with myself to get me to read the old books before I'm allowed to read the new ones. And my deal was at the time, part of it was to keep me from buying new books because I would just compulsively buy new releases and then not read them. So I'm doing good with the not buying books thing, but now that a whole bunch of books are available online through the library, it's a little bit harder. And my deal with myself was I wasn't even allowed to borrow it from the library, but I did read the Sarah Pinborough book. I'm going off on a tangent that's not really important for the sake of talking about this book. But anyway, another psychological thriller. I've heard, I heard Kayla from Books and Lala's review. She poo-pooed this book. So we'll see. Her and I align on some things, but not all things, but it might just sort of be a frothy, soapy, fun book anyway. I feel like Behind Her Eyes is also super polarizing. So I enjoyed it. I took it for what it was. I thought it was a good read. But this one, another um, infidelity. I don't know what the heck I'm doing here. So this is some people, <laughs> some rich fancy pants people. It sounds like down in Savannah, Georgia. So it's a woman and her husband, and then it sounds like a guy that he works with brings home a hot new wife from his trip to London. So a young, I think, trophy wife, it sounds like, who has some nice chemistry with our main character's husband, which she is not at all jazzed about for all the obvious reasons. So it says, their obvious magnetic attraction, and then the gloves come off. Revenge is best served cold, but in the steamy savanna heat, blood runs so hot that this summer it might just boil over into murder. So again, this sounds very like soapy frothy fun. So we'll see. Nothing to lose in my book. And I also think the cover is pretty cool but super surprised to find yet another new release um, there for the taking. So those are all the books that I have in my queue right now, which I'm excited about. So again, I will keep you guys posted. Let me know if you guys have read any of these thoughts, feelings. I was gonna say cautionary tale, but like, please don't tell me if you don't like them, but you can tell me if you don't like them. And then I would also like to know, are you guys like hitting the library hard with the eBooks and the audiobooks? Are you supporting local bookstores? Are you supporting sort of the big ones still? And what you've gotten lately, what's on your list, what you're reading, all the good stuff, let me know down below and we can keep on the chat. I hope you guys are doing great. I hope everyone is well, safe, family, friends, everybody. The times are just horrible. I don't think it's going to stop feeling weird for a really, really long time, but I'm thinking of all of you guys. I hope you're doing well. I appreciate that you are spending a little bit of your time here with me, and I will see you guys very soon in another video. So take care, everybody. Bye.